Hey guys, Shane from the Vanu Podcast here. Just wanted to do a uh, quick video titled Three Keys to Vanu. Uh, so before I get into that, I guess let me preface it by preface this video by saying I uh, decided to go for a drive today. Uh, last time I went for my uh, van life practice runs, I went to somewhere called Wolf Creek State Park and uh, I decided to take a, take a uh, drive down to Eagle Creek State Park. And, uh, you know, just decided, decided I wanted to go on a cruise and a, and, and a little hike. So uh, here I am. I decided to uh, park on the way back and uh, record a, uh, a, a video for you guys. So, again, the three keys to Vanu. Uh, now, I did come up with these, you know, this morning. Or I guess come up with this list of three things. I'm sure there's some other keys. But uh, I would say that these are the most... Um, Definitely the most important ones if one is going to be successful uh, in their pursuance of Vanu uh, or uh, an invulnerability to coercion. So uh, the first one is mental and philosophical consistency. Uh, now this is key. Uh, <laughs> it's why we started uh, seasons uh, one to I guess seasons all three seasons of the podcast uh, with uh, you know exercising those collectivist spooks. Uh, because if one is uh, calling themselves a Vanuan and uh, you know maybe pursuing van nomadism or something. And they're running for political office too. I mean, yeah, that doesn't work, right? That's that's contradictory. Uh, you know, even pr even you know uh, when it comes to practicality, uh, you know the uh, the idea is to make yourself more invulnerable to coercion. So you're you're taking steps. Van Nomadism would make yourself more invulnerable to coercion. But on the other hand, you're working inside the coercive system of the state. Uh, so that mental consistency is is definitely crucial. And then the philosophical consistency, uh, it's it's obviously right right along uh, right alongside that. But um, it's basically, uh, as Rayo put in one of his articles, he's neither uh, left nor right libertarian, but a consistent advocate of freedom. Uh, that's what's important to me. Um, I don't much care about uh, labels or uh, you know economic, uh, you know whatever the uh, these people you know uh, adhere to economically, as long as they're not using the state uh, or advocating the state. Uh, to use violence against me, I don't really care all that much. And plus, uh, from what I found out, if you have a couple conversations with these folks and explain to them the uh, the errors of their ways, uh, they tend to, uh, <laughs> you know, sometimes they tend to, uh, you know, uh, change their minds. So I'm not too 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 big of a I'm not too big of a of a, <clears throat> of a stickler there. But uh, yeah, that philosophical consistency is definitely uh, definitely important. Without that, found, without that mental and philosophical philosophical consistency as a foundation, uh, you know, it's a, it kind of uh, you know at least a backsliding back into political crusading, uh, and that's not uh, that's definitely not the idea. The idea is for Vanu to be a lifestyle change, not for you to uh, not for an individual to pursue this lifestyle for five years, you know, maybe fall prey back to the city psychological pressures and then return to a servile society life. I mean, that's not the idea. Vanu is a lifestyle change. This is not a temporary thing. Um, you know, some lifestyles could be temporary, you know, in pursuance of others, but Vanu itself is not a, a temporary thing. This is a, uh, this is a lifestyle. It's your, your entire life and, uh, you'll increase your, your competency and, uh, your success, uh, as you become more experienced. So, so yeah, exercising those collectivist spooks is absolutely crucial. It's, uh, it's a, it has to be the first step, uh, has to be the first step. And, uh, as I've said before, it's not something that you're going to solve immediately. Uh, you know, for me being 26, and, uh, you know, not having to deal with all of the uh, contradictions and inconsistencies that most folks have to deal with, you know, their entire lives, or a lot of folks at least, a lot of status. Um, it was quite easy for me, although uh, I, I'm a human being, I still kind of, uh, you know, falter at times. So, uh, you know, exercising those collective spooks and, uh, you know, dealing with that controlled schizophrenia is something that will be a lifelong venture uh, as well. The, uh, the Servile Society is uh, alluring. Uh, you know, the, the city lights are alluring. All of those comfortabilities, uh, all of that uh, comfortability and uh, those amenities. Uh, you know, that's uh, definitely attractive to folks. So it's uh, important to keep your eye on the prize and, uh, you know, the, you know, the, 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 uh, the desire and necessity for freedom, uh, you know, as, uh, as, as uh, you know, is necessary for any of a new one, which brings us to number two, which is a burning desire for uh, a burning desire and necessity for freedom. And this is important, right? Because when we're talking about Vani, we're talking about radical lifestyle changes. So... <laughs> radical lifestyle lifestyle changes outside of you know you definitely uh, definitely alternative lifestyles so 
for one to pursue one of these lifestyles, they must, you know, have this burning desire for freedom. Uh, if they, uh, you know, are fine with their survival society life, then uh, I don't think you're going to see many of those folks pursuing these lifestyle changes. I just don't think so. Uh, so, I mean, yeah, that burning passion and necessity for freedom. That's, uh, that's important. That's the mindset of a self-liberator. That's the mindset um, of an individual who understands the nature of the situation that they find themselves in. Uh, and they're going to rectify that uh, using, uh, you know, any means necessary as long as, you know, uh, other than, you know, violating person and property. So burning desire for Burn, burning desire and necessity for freedom is absolutely crucial. It's what drives me. Uh, it, it, it really is. It's what, uh, you know, just being in the survival society is almost enough. <laughs> uh, you know, my desire to just escape that. But uh, obviously, uh, concomitantly, the, the desire for freedom is, uh, is extremely strong. So uh, that's number two. And number three, this is, and these are all just kind of universal, you know, among all lifestyle changes. But this last one, security culture. Security culture is key to Vanu. And I think if, uh, I'm going to paraphrase the definition here, but uh, security culture is the right to privacy directly applied. So it's uh, assuming that, uh, you know, assuming, assuming philosophically that privacy is a, is a necessity, that's a good thing, then um, security culture is the way to actually implement that into your lives. And it can be both digital, physical, um, blending into the survival society so you don't draw attention, uh, limiting conflict, um, you know, using uh, encryption, both high-tech and low-tech encryption, uh, role-playing police interrogations, a whole bunch of stuff. But security culture is absolutely key uh, to Vanu. Uh, defense and deterrence are two of the main, I guess, uh, strategies that Vanuans utilize uh, in keeping themselves invulnerable, invulnerable to the coercion of the survival society and, uh, and the state. So security culture is key. Um, not only for uh, import-export, you know, uh, keeping access to their open but not free trading centers, uh, but then denying them access to your new and home base. Um, yeah, it's important during import-export for sure, because uh, the nature of the survival society is uh, antithetical to freedom, antithetical to your autonomy. So uh, practicing security culture while, while practicing import-export uh, or while conducting import-export is absolutely important. And uh, just more more generally speaking, when it comes to, to Vani being invulnerable to coercion, the best way to make yourself more invulnerable to coercion is to just to keep low, right? Um, <clears throat> now, Rayo had a quote about this. I don't remember off the top of my head, but it's that, uh, you know, the self-liberator has tactical advantages over, this, over uh, you know, your would-be political crusader. The politi political crusader wants to take down the state, and they're openly in defiance against the state. They're going to be more uh, tar targeted more than, uh, say, your Rayos, the folks who are staying low, you know, using pseudonyms, practicing security culture, uh, they're going to be far more invulnerable to coercion. Um, so I guess to, to give you an example of somebody that might fit into that, uh, you know, that would-be political crusader that, uh, I guess not even would-be, the actual political crusader who, uh, you know, is in, you know, open defiance to the state, uh, who, you know, may, who may be a target. Uh, actually, I'm not, I'm not even going to go there. I don't want to, I don't want to give any free advertising. I'm sure you guys are going to lose where I'm going with that. So I guess, yeah, uh, to reiterate, the three keys to volume, mental and philosophical consistency, it's a, uh, you know, key foundation, uh, definitely a key foundation. I, I, I've said it before and I'll say it again. I don't know how beneficial or how productive a second realm or volume mini culture would be if it was full of uh, controlled schizophrenics uh, or, you know, uh, political crusaders or uh, people who have otherwise not uh, exercised those collected as spooks. So that's a necessary foundation, mental, philosophical consistency. Uh, two, a burning desire and necessity for freedom absolutely key and uh then practicing great security culture um f that's basically any self-liberator that wants to keep themselves out of government dungeons that's a necessity so that's uh all i have for you guys uh please uh, if you enjoyed the video make sure to like and subscribe down below uh, on steam it make sure to go ahead and uh, upvote this post and if you're on youtube watching this uh, i'll put a link to the steam it uh, in the show notes or in the description but i'll add some music and such that's uh you know the uh intellectual property goons will only put on youtube so um that's all vonnypodcast.com one other thing uh if you haven't seen already uh via liberty under attack publications i'm starting to uh, actually publish in paperback books uh hashtag agora is the one uh, that's uh, almost finished right now i'll have a uh, going mobile a really terrific vonny publication from the uh 80s uh that'll be or 70s and 70s or 80s uh, it'll be coming out uh, in paperback soon just uh Go to uh, Amazon.com and just search for hashtag Agora and hashtag Agora, and uh, you'll find uh, the uh, you'll find the page to, to purchase the uh, the Kindle version or the paperback. Uh, so Liberty Under Attack Publications is in, is in full swing. 
So um, you'll see, you should see a lot of stuff coming out uh, f- uh, from there uh, in the very near future. So uh, thanks, guys. Bonniepodcast.com. I will talk to you later. Peace.